So yeah, once again, thank, thanks everybody for joining. Um, Q for Teams, champions using Teams effectively. I think I see all of our favorite friends in here. I don't see any new folks, but if you are new or watching online, um, to ask me, ask us anything, office hours, come here to talk about Teams and all things collaboration off Microsoft 365. So as always, we're informal, come off mute, hit the chat. If you came with a burning question, we're here to try to help. Um, outside of that, you know, uh, we there's always something brewing in our heads related to teams and whatnot. I happen to be thinking about good old OneNote in teams lately. Uh, I don't know, uh, maybe by show of hands, who's using OneNote, show of raised hands, who's using OneNote in um, teams or, or in general. So I see the hands going up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, pretty much the, the whole room. OK. Um, and in fact, what the reason I was thinking about it is um, any longtime OneNote users kind of knows a little bit about this, the um, story of its um, changes. You know, we've had OneNote desktop forever. I've been a fanatic for OneNote for a long, long time. And then for a brief moment, this little upstart, OneNote for Windows 10 came into the picture with all these modern features. And so you had the OneNote, mod, we'll call it modern OneNote and classic OneNote or desktop. And so it had its fun for a while. And in fact, I had switched over and was using the OneNote for Windows and leaving poor desktop behind, even though there were some key features still left over in the desktop world. Um, but lately, and, and if you've been keeping up with articles, I mean, you know that we've been trying to converge them and, you know, make sure that parity is there between the two. And so OneNote Desktop, I think, is uh, uh, reclaiming its its uh, throne again, not only because they're of the modern features that they are brought over and continuing to bring over, plus its old school, you know, tried and true features, um, and then, of course, because of the integration of Copilot uh, into OneNote as well. So um, it's starting to, at least for me, you know, I've started to pay more attention to it now. But I've always liked it from a uh, team's perspective. And so uh, even though so it sounds like the whole room is uses team uh, uses OneNote, but I wanted to talk about at least one piece that may be um, uh, might be a detail some folks missed, maybe not, but we probably all know that you can create uh, a OneNote notebook in your Teams a uh, couple of ways, really, right? Um, it's a uh, file type, just like all these others, right? Hit new and I can create a new notebook, just like anything else, right? In Teams and obviously do that over in SharePoint as well. Even within and then within the uh, you know, an actual chat post. Um, I, I don't think it's there, right? But putting a link to a OneNote page or something here is going to, you know, work just fine as well. Um, so you can refer to OneNote notes here um, in, in chat as well. But uh, one thing I wanted to point out, if we go over to the SharePoint side of things, uh, even so we're 20 we're here in 2024 we've been all been using teams a long time and those, those of us long-term team users remember and realize that under the hood of this is still good old-fashioned groups i think that i think it was called groups 365 it's been that long now that i'm starting to remember the naming but there's a groups uh uh object underneath all of this that probably many of us have stopped using because so much functionality is right in Teams. But let's uh, take a little uh, journey back in time here. <laughs> the, the, the hack way I get to it is uh, conversations, which is just going to take me over to Outlook. Uh, your 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 groups may already be there, but uh, this is my hack way of getting there for sure. So you can see here uh, that same team I was in. I'm now in Outlook where that 
team is listed and this is the old school group for it um, where you can see things like a notebook, a planner, the, the site, and even the group calendar, right? Um, so again, these are all kind of concepts of the group uh, piece before Teams came around, right? But if I go back, uh, see, so come. On. Oh, did it open a new tab? Let's go here. Uh, where am I? Da -da -da. Come on. Uh, now I'm losing my tabs here. This is where I want it to. Let's go here. Uh, yeah, th this is good. So I, I use that conversation button to get there. And these are the this is the menu that comes with every new site for a team. So conversations, um, even though that's a tricky nav, you would think that might be your team's conversations and it's not. It's really the email discussion boards that we're probably not using anymore. But then there's also notebook. So the site created by your team automatically has a notebook associated with it. Uh, and that is useful um, to some degree. You know that if you make a new team or group that you immediately have a notebook that's ready to go, even though it only takes a few clicks to make a new one. So um, sometimes because that is so prominent there, people will tend to use that one. Uh, and the only call out I'm making here is that uh, you may consider, though, making your own write in files because this one isn't quite as flexible. It's, you know, like, uh, in, where is it? Where does it live? I mean, it lives certainly here by this notebook, but uh, when it comes time to share things or, um, or move things around, that's where it gets tricky because that default notebook um, is kind of sitting in its own space separate from where your other notebooks might be, where you can kind of put them anywhere in the files area. So I do like to call that out when I'm kind of doing any kind of Teams training for a new user is that, yes, there is a notebook there, um, but uh, consider just making your own notebooks just so that they behave the way you would expect um, your notebooks to behave. Uh, but that being said, I still feel like the, the OneNote notebook uh, is a great way of sharing content in uh, Teams. We do have a lot of options these days for what I'll call like collaborative spaces. OneNote was one of the first, probably the first um, in the game, if you go back uh, as far as I do, right? Before there was real-time co-authoring in Office, there was OneNote sitting on your network in your office and people could collaborate there and the syncing was happening on your local network. Um, for those that don't know, that we, we used to do stuff outside of the cloud back in the day. <laughs> uh, now everything's cloud-based, thankfully, mm -hmm. but uh, OneNote was the first. And so uh, it's still good for that. Um, and uh, the last thing I'll kind of point out in this little preamble here is just, um, my tip in terms of OneNote is don't be afraid to use it to share or collaborate on even the, like a single page. Many times people don't fire up OneNote till they're, they've got an idea about something that requires a lot of sections and pages and they kind of want to share a whole book worth of content with someone. But I mean, you know, it doesn't cost you anything, right, to make these these notebooks. They're, they're you know, they're super small in size, they're in the cloud and all that good stuff. So if you've got a page to share, but you want to share it in a in a an environment like OneNote with all of its, you know, drawing tools and all and all those kind of things, don't be afraid to do that. Um, especially since it's, you know, so easy, as we said, to just come in here and, you know, uh, you know, create a new notebook and then grab that link or hit the share button and uh, pop that, copy that link, pop it in a chat somewhere and, um, you know, and you're good to go. All right, so, um, so yeah, so that's just kind of bringing one note back again for the, from the perspective of it uh, really getting some uh, attention lately, including more modern features and also, uh, you know, because of that co-pilot integration. And in fact, I think uh, Stacy can give us a little teaser of some of that co-pilot OneNote integration as well. 
Yeah, I sure can. And I'm happy to. Um, it's been a, a exciting to me to be part of the co-pilot rollout uh, worldwide over the last seven months or so. And when um, Ricardo said that he wanted to talk about OneNote today, I went, oh, I've got a great prompt and a great uh, demo that I'd like to share. So I'm going to share my screen. I will be driving from OneNote for the desktop because that is the um, platform that Copilot is available for today. It's coming to the browser version of OneNote as well, but for today that is limited to our uh, desktop version. And you will see in this example or this demo of Copilot, I'm actually going to lean into a use case, right? We always try to approach Copilot with something we're trying to accomplish and we want to do so more efficiently. So let's say, and I just recently got back from a meeting with my team, so this was a, a good fit for a topic. Let's say that I am the member of my team being asked to plan an offsite meeting, meaning we're all going to leave our offices, whether they're remote offices or offices in other parts of the country, and come together at the Microsoft Silicon Valley campus. And it's going to be my job for April 29th through the May the 3rd to get the 15 of us together and to set up the agenda and determine what activities we might do and even maybe find places for all of us to stay while we're there. So I love leaning on Copilot for these kinds of things where I have some details that will help Copilot go through the large language model using my natural language prompt and bring back specifics in its response that helps me, right? So I have copied off screen here a great prompt that I will uh, review with you, and then we will put Copilot to work to run this prompt and help me plan this offsite. So in OneNote that you're looking at here, I just went ahead and created a page for the team offsite planning for fiscal year 25, and I engaged Copilot. It sits up in the ribbon in your Microsoft 365 apps, and in um, OneNote in particular, it is a side panel that you can turn on and turn off by engaging with the Copilot button in the ribbon. Once you do that, Copilot is going to always give you some orientation. It's going to say, hey, there are some things that I can help you with. It can help you with putting some ideas together, drafting a plan. In this case, I'm going to have it do the draft a plan option. So I'm going to go into the UI at the bottom here and I'm going to paste my prompt. Now, you'll notice that it's fairly lengthy prompt for just a, a quick thing that I want Copilot to do. But that's because if I'm not specific, I'm not going to get the type of results that I want for this particular ask that I have for Copilot. So let's look at this prompt. I'm asking it to draft a plan for the team meeting for 15 team members, including some executives, at the Silicon Valley campus of Microsoft on the week of April 29th. And I indicate that the 29th and that Friday, May the 3rd, are travel days. I want it to present me with some recommendations for where the team can stay and even some team building activities that might be relevant in the area. I'm also going to give it a couple of tidbits that are going to help it scope that response. And I let it know that many of our team members are, Mar are Marriott Rewards Club members, and that may be helpful, and you'll see how that's helpful for Copilot. And then I'm going to tell it what we're getting together to discuss. That is annual planning and team goals for the next fiscal year. I'm even going to have it do a quick suggestion for an agenda for our three working days that we have together for the office meetings as well as the team activities. And when I click send, it's going to go to work reviewing that and populating its response here in the side panel. That's a benefit to me because it's not touching my OneNote page yet. 
It's going to process that prompt. It's going to comb through what I told it. And it's going to give me the, the response here in the panel, which I can then review and decide how I want to use that information. I can copy it. It provides me a little copy icon I'll show you. And I can drop it right onto my page if I'm happy with the response that it gives me. One thing, I think this might be the first Copilot demo I'm doing in Qt. So one thing I always, always, always emphasize when I'm talking about Copilot is that when you're working with Copilot, you are in a driver's seat. It needs that human interaction. It is absolutely not autopilot. You have to give it the details. You have to engineer your prompt in a way that will get you the results that you want. You have to be participatory in getting Copilot's reaction. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think a lot of people hear Copilot and they think, oh, it'll do everything for me and it will read my mind. Well, that's not necessarily the case, nor would you want it to be the case. It's not going to take action into Microsoft 365 for you, but it's going to help prepare content for you that you can then work with and decide how you want to apply it. So like I mentioned, it populated a whole bunch of great information here in this panel. And what I thought I'd demo to you, rather than reading through it here where it's all crunched together in the panel, I'm gonna use the copy button that it provides and I'm going to bring it over to my OneNote page and decide where I wanna paste it and just click to paste it. So now that it's in my page, I control the content. I have kept it as is and deployed it there on the page. Now, as the human in the driver's seat for Copilot, I'm going to read through this and make any tweaks that I think are necessary. So let's see how it did. It provided me a plan for my team meeting in Silicon Valley. It made note of that key detail I gave it. On April the 29th, it's noted as a travel day. It's even breaking down the airports and how there might be shuttles necessary. And it's giving us some suggestions for a hotel that happens to be a Marriott near the Silicon Valley campus. It even tells me about how far that is away from the campus. And it even gives me some suggestions like check in and relax at the hotel. It offers free Wi-Fi and a fitness center and so on. Um, it's also giving me some location for attractions nearby that, which as the person who's doing the planning for this meeting for 15 people, it would be great to have that at my fingertips. And Copilot went, got that information and brought it back and articulated it for me. Now I can choose who I share it with and how I share it. On April 30th, it's noted as a meeting day. It's suggesting where we can grab breakfast, about how far the hotel is from um, away from the campus, that the meeting will take place. And it's giving me some building and room number locations. It's suggesting uh, it will be up to me to validate that that room is available at the campus, but certainly giving me ideas for where we can meet given our size. And the agenda to, of the day, and it talks about the previous fiscal year achievements and challenges, setting team goals, which I explicitly told it I wanted to do, and discussing strategies for achieving those goals. Uh, it's also built out a similar uh, agenda for May the 1st, which is the, I think, the Wednesday of that week. And it's suggesting some options for what the team can do for team building. And these are actually in the area of the Silicon Valley campus. So it's locationally relevant. Same for the second, it's broken that day down as well and summarized again that May the 3rd is a travel day, which I informed it. It also gives me a couple of prompts back here in the panel for Copilot based on what I already asked it to do. It comes back and it says, here's some additional questions you can ask me if you need to. We can ask what are some recommended accommodations in addition to that courtyard myriad it already gave me, or we can ask it what team building activities are available. And maybe the ones it provided me in this draft agenda are just fine, but maybe I wanna see what other information it could come back with. So I'll just click this 
in the Copilot panel and let it go and get that information for me, which I can then add to a subsequent page that I want to create, or I could just copy that content and email it to my team as a heads up, or I could take it to our team and paste it. So from Copilot, it's generating the response and then it's up to me how I use it, what I tweak of it, what I keep of it, and, and where I share it. So just a quick glance here. There are many team building, team building activities available in SVC. Some options could include a visit to the Tech Museum of Innovation, which would be perfect for a team from Microsoft. Um, a great walk off for a group class in trapeze or aerial skills. And it's even giving me references that I can click on and go check out those sites for that information. There's another reference here to some internal information about the building near the Intel Museum. And if I want to see those references a little closer, I can click on those and visit them to get more detail about those items. And as typical co-pilot fashion, it's giving me some subsequent prompts that I can turn around and give back to it for some more information. So I hope that that's been helpful as your first look at Copilot in OneNote. Ricardo, have you seen any questions come up from the group? Uh, no questions. I think they were uh, enthralled with uh, what you had going on there. So great. <laughs> I did, <laughs> I did rem remind everybody, um, you know, Copilot M365 expected around the summer time frame for GCC. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I did see a question come through on the QA about adaptive cards with the GCC. Um, specifically using adaptive cards in emails in GCC. And while you were doing your presentation at the beginning part of that OneNote uh, demo, I did a little search and I, I didn't come back with when they're supposed to be full featured for GCC. So I'll take that as an action item unless you know of um, any details around adaptive cards in GCC. No, and I think uh, I think the question I think mentioned uh, Outlook specifically is that is that right? Yeah. So yes. yeah. right because because you you know adaptive cars you also have that from a power automate perspective. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I've checked on uh, adaptive car usage in Outlook. I mean that that might come in a couple of different flavors, so that might be something uh, yeah we'd have to look into. Yeah, we'll check that. Uh, the, the other thing I did want to mention, though, uh, kind of wrapping up this com conversation with OneNote, and it's as I call it, it's it's ri it's rise back to power. Um, those of you that might use meeting details, if you haven't seen that feature, that's where you are inserting the details of a meeting for convenience sake, right? The title, attendees, and any you know notes that are in the meeting invite. Um, you, uh, you can see here it's got saying new, but if I let's try this one here, if I add if I click that right, it's adding the title and even a link to the out Outlook item. So, you know, this has been there a while, but it has been uh, upgraded a bit lately. And in fact, I'm going if I go over here, there is a tech community article about it. I'm putting this in the chat uh paste it there um just showing that uh it gets fancier and one of the big things here is for us teams premium users where our meetings oftentimes are now recorded and as a result getting the intelligent recap notes the inclusion of those notes as part of that meeting details or the inclusion of the loop notebook um, that was used in that meeting, being a part of that quick meeting details, you know, I just used to just saw I clicked one button and all that kind of came over. You can sort of see it in this screenshot, uh, the, the, the PowerPoint in that meeting, the, uh, the loop there, uh, I think, oh yeah, there's the, I know it's very small, but there's the down at the bottom, the very, the uh, meeting summary, 
bringing all that in automatically too is pretty cool. Um, it just personally, just when I was about to complain that OneNote wasn't linking me to the meeting recap that I so desperately wanted for the meeting, then I started seeing that this was there. Um, so uh, between this, between Copilot being there, I, I declare that OneNote is making a comeback uh, back to its prominence. If you had put it on the shelf because it's a 25 year old tool, <laughs> I would say dust it off. It's good stuff there. Um, and uh, and of course, full integration in the teams and 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 everything else. So um, so yeah, I I think anybody who's been on Q for Teams a while knows every now and then I'll, I'll go off and fanatically talk about things like OneNote and SharePoint and stuff. So yes, OneNote has been my buddy for many, many years. So uh, yeah, expect to see more there, but uh, yeah, definitely some good stuff. Uh, any any questions on it yet? We, we threw a lot of at you. Uh, Copilot, OneNote, all that stuff. Any questions or? I saw some uh, thumbs up and things like that as we were talking, so hopefully it's resonating well. There was one question in the chat that I'll just verbalize here that had to do with Copilot and its ability to check room availability or uh, any calendaring. And for now, the answer is no, it's not available to actually book rooms or do that kind of validation against a schedule that you point it to. But it's coming and I'm very excited. That was some of the early access preview um, comments and requests that we got from customers. Once they were using Copilot, they could ask about previous meetings and maybe a fine time for a future meeting and can it just schedule it and that was a, a pretty common request that we received so that feature has been prioritized and committed and we're looking forward to delivering that as an enhancement to copilot here soon that is exciting i agree get my own little virtual assistant to schedule yes. all my meetings <laughs> Nice. A whole new world. <laughs> yeah. You know, that actually, uh, find time, or what, what is now a um, uh, meeting schedule button in Outlook might be a, a something for a future topic, too. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if people have been find time users or, or using any, of the, let's just call it generically the functionality for helping you schedule meetings with people outside of your org. Um, if that's a topic of interest or want to see a demo, maybe raise your hand on that one. Um, we can do that in a in a future session, but that is I depend on that tool for uh, scheduling meetings with customers and um, to hear that that experience will be enhanced by future copilot uh, updates is is exciting. So. Good stuff. Well, we are uh, at that time. Any last minute uh, last 60 seconds? Anything from anybody? Awesome. Uh, hopefully that was uh, useful. And we will keep rocking and rolling with Cute for Teams. Uh, I believe this is episode 116, 117. Um, so I don't know how many all of you all, how, how many you all have attended. If, if there's any 100 uh, uh, attendee users out there, <laughs> <laughs> or even 50, that'd be a nice little badge to create. I've attended 50 uh, Q for Teams meetings. That's that'd be oh, kind of yeah. cool. That'd yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, have a great weekend. Have a great start to your March 2024. And we'll see you next time. Bye, all. Thank you. <laughs>